Jamon, I'm assuming thumbs up. You've gone dark on us. Yes, sir. All right. So this is the second way to identify the property. There could be or may need to be a time frame when all of a sudden you're like, dude, I want to live in something smaller than 10 acres. This system does not allow for that. 10 acres, as you saw, was the smallest division of land. We must incorporate the third method that we're going to talk about in the book there on page uh, 74 of your book. It is called the lot and block method. So in essence, what we are talking about is now let's look at This and what I have drawn on the board is that northeast quadrant of the northeast quadrant of the northeast quadrant of section 27 of three ranges west, two tier south of principal meridian number two. And I told we talked about that being 10 acres. Well, now we need to live on something smaller because the population has been ever increasing and we live on smaller lots and smaller areas so what we need is a way for a developer to come in buy these 10 acres and then he is going to develop these 10 acres into some type of housing addition so he is going to go in with his land plan and go okay well so here's the road i'm going to build a driveway and I'm going to build all of this, and there's a cul-de-sac, and that's gonna come over here, and there's a cul-de-sac, and this is gonna bend around, and that was a really bad picture. This is gonna bend around, and I'll put some roads in here to cross that. And I'm going to name this development Sherman Commons. And then the developer is going to build it into lots and go, oh, here's some house lots. I'll put house lots on them. And he is going to number those lots one, and this one's going to be two, and three, and five, and there's four. And they're going to go all the way around over here. Here's 114 and 116 and how many of our lots he develops. And we'll talk about the land plan when we get to another chapter, but it will explain how many lots he can build by using this thing called the density zoning. And it will define to him how many lots he can build in there with a house on it. And there's my house. What he has done now is developed those 10 acres into this thing called the lot and block method. That is the third method that we can get into if we need to live in smaller than 10 acres. And what happens is when he creates these, he would record them so that everybody knows that this is lot seven right there and it would be lot seven of Sherman Commons. Of the Northeast Squadron of the Northeast Squadron of the Northeast Squadron of Section 27 of Three Ranges West to Tier South of Principal Meridian number two. There is only one in the world. I told you. They were unique. <clears throat> Here is the unique identifier. If I told you to come to my house at lot seven of South of Sherman Commons, uh, blah, 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 you could only end up in one spot because my neighbor is lot nine of Sherman Commons. And this neighbor's lot five. And the guy across the street 
was lot. That would be 8. 8. You could not end up at 432 South Emerson in a different city because this method does not allow for the similarly numbered properties. They are every one of them is unique in the way it's defined. Now, in order to cut down on all of that northeast quadrant kind of stuff, we don't want to go through that all the time. So we will actually define that quadrant inside of what we call a plat book. And that is talked about on, yeah, somewhere in your book. And that book will be identified as the Northeast quadrant of the Northeast quadrant. So it's very easy, we can reduce it and say, well, that address is lot seven of Sherman Commons per plat book number eight, number one, where plat book number one is defined as the Northeast Quadrant or the Northeast Quadrant or the Northeast Quadrant. We don't have to go through it all the time. Lot seven, Sherman Commons per plat book one. If I want to look at the Southeast Quadrant of the Northeast Quadrant of the Northeast Quadrant, I would get out plat book number two. So I would not have to go through all of that addressing portion and just identify it by the plat book that it got recorded in down at the recorder's office. Thumbs up. Cool. So what I did was take that 10 acres smaller. Remember that inside of this 10 acres, in theory, we could also use the meets and bounds. You can use the meets and bounds inside of it. So if this is the Northeast quadrant of the Northeast quadrant, I could literally go back to that one that we just did a minute ago, started there and it went 200 feet, went at an angle to the creek that's running through, go up the creek and back there to that point of beginning of the Northeast quadrant of the Northeast quadrant. So you can use the lot and block method inside of the rectangular survey method, but you can also use the meets and bounds inside of the rectangular survey method. So both of those can fit inside of it if you're dealing with something smaller than 10 acres. So back to that meets and bounds when I said it worked really good for, you know, three or four or 500 feet. Well, that would fit inside of that flat book one. So you could potentially use the meets and bounds inside of the government rectangular survey method, just like you use the lot and block inside of the survey method. These get recorded on a survey and there is a sample picture on page 75 that will show you the survey and how they create all of those lots with the dimensions and all of that. Okay, thumbs up, cool. Well, here's a problem. I actually lied to you and you know when I lie because my lips are moving, what I did was I did not build a house back here. I actually built a condo building. So we need to identify or worry about heights. And if you remember back in section uh, chapter one, I mentioned this word, we have to deal with this thing now called an air lot. Because if you looked at our map, we have only been talking about east and west and north and south, tiers or ranges running and tiers running east and west. We actually live in three dimensions, so we've got to worry about the height because someone actually lives in 90 to 99 feet of Sherman Commons, lot seven, per plat book one, and someone else use, lives in 80 
to 89 feet of lot seven of Sherman Commons. So we have to worry about the elevation and make sure that when we create these condos, we identify specific air lots for people to live in. And that is how we create condos is through this thing called the Condo Association or the uh, horizontal regime. Good example of this would be that big blue building down on uh, MLK Drive in Washington or West Street or 421 or Michigan. Does that drive you anybody else crazy but me when they have a road and it gives several different names? That's the best one. It's like West Street becomes Martin Luther King, then becomes Michigan, and then further becomes 421 as it goes out the north side of Indy. Same road. So that big blue building down there. <clears throat> now we all understand what the word Marriott means, so we know what it is. But when they were building it, it kind of looked like an apartment building. Or it could have been condos. Well, it turns out it's a hotel. How do we define it to make sure if it was condos? The developer would have to create legal addresses based upon the height or the air lots that we just talked about and submit them to the assessor's office and go, hey, look, this one tax parcel that you thought was an apartment building actually is a hundred condos and each one is owned individually and they must be taxed individually. So I have to create the air lot for a person to live in 90 to 100 feet, 80 to 90 feet, 70 to 80 feet, 60 to 50, blah, 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 blah. And you get the point. That's what defines the condo is the recording of this horizontal property regime that has his definition to define, but they are all still sitting on lot seven. So we have to add in the height factor of that 80 to 89 of lot seven of Sherman Commons. Sarah lives at 60 to 70 feet of lot seven of Sherman Commons. All of that, we have to worry about the vertical. Now, the problem with that is, here's another problem. Greenwood is actually like six to 700 feet above sea level. So if we were using the height, we have to go, well, where's zero? Is zero the ground level on West Street? Or what about Greenwood or where you're sitting at your house? it may not be perfectly the same height. You know, the ground could look like this. So here, that may be 5,000 above sea level, that height may be 4,800. So we do not ever use the absolute height, which is based off of sea level. And if you go to like Denver, there's a plaque that you can look at that says 5,280 feet above sea level. Well, it makes no sense if you put this person here and go, oh, well, that's six to 700 feet. What? That's on the ground. So we use this thing called a, another monument to identify where the zero is. Think of it like this. I could literally tell you how old I am. Hey, I'm 56 years old. That gives you an absolute number. But I could also say I'm four years older than my brother, and you would figure out, oh, well, the brother's 52, therefore Raymond's 56. We do the same thing. I don't want to identify the first floor as being 600 feet above the ground. That's the absolute number. That makes no sense. That is our datum point is ground level or sea level. So what we use is a monument that says, okay, so if we ID this here as being the zero, then sure, this one is 10 feet above that point, and it can be named. There's one at Crown Hill. 
There's one in Mooresville. Every bridge under Indiana rule actually has a uh, elevation level. So you would say, well, I'm 10 feet above the Crown Hill. Oh, not Crown Point, Crown Hill. Monument, that is what I'm going to call zero so that I've got realistic looking numbers and not something like 628 feet or 3,000 feet above sea level. Everybody get what I'm saying? It's using it as a reference point so that our numbers don't sound bad. 56 sounds really old, but if I said I'm four years older than Kenneth, oh, well, that, that may not be too bad. Obviously, Kenneth's my brother in there. <laughs>